honor and, and a, a great uh, pleasure and opportunity to uh, go across oceans via satellite to talk to Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, this is Charlie Rose sitting with Archbishop Tutu here in New York. Um, and there you are. Uh, please join me here in New York in welcoming Aung San Suu Kyi, who is in Myanmar. Thank you very much. As you can see, there is a standing ovation here in New York for you. Um, which, is, which is a tribute. If we can hear you, um, which is a tribute uh, to the respect that the world has for you, um, how are you, and, and um, how goes your own struggle for democracy? Uh, I'm well. I'm very happy to see both of you, especially Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who I've always wanted to meet in person, but this is almost as good. And it's very kind of you to get in touch with me in this way. Uh, you asked how our struggle is getting on. It's getting on. It's not easy. And I'm sure every, every South African knows how difficult this kind of struggle can be. And you were just talking about reconciliation. The reconciliation bit is sometimes the most difficult of all, because both sides have to be prepared to compromise and to give, not just take. And give and take is such a mutual process that we need to find the right balance so we are at a very difficult stage, but at the, mo at the same time, as I've always said, I'm a cautious optimist, and I'm cautiously optimist, optimistic that we're going forward and that we will be able to get onto the road towards true national reconciliation, which is essential if our country is to be the kind of country we all want. Uh, President Clinton earlier remembered giving you, um, after the Nobel Prize, um, a great honor that this country could bestow upon you. Um, what's necessary in terms of the message that you want to say to the world about uh, the struggle? And the, because I think of a speech you made about freedom from fear. Um, how have you been able to make this journey when we appreciate the sacrifices uh, you've had to make in not seeing your children and having your husband die um, away from your country? All journeys are made step by step and that's how I have made this journey, step by step. To be quite honest, I didn't think when I first started out in the, in the movement for democracy that I would have to devote my whole life to it. I took it for granted that I would somehow part of the family as I went along with my struggle. But it turned out not to be so. But I'm not the only one who is in this, who is in this position now. Many of my colleagues are working alone without the support of family and friends. So I get tremendous courage from looking at them, from looking at how hard they struggle. And they are the unknown soldiers of our cause. And I think the unknown soldiers are far braver and far worthier than people like me who are known to the world. And that helps us a lot. Because we're known to the world, we are protected to a great degree. And those unknown people who are struggling as much as I am, they are not known to the world. So they have very much less protection. So their courage is tremendous. Their sacrifice is true sacrifice. And if you work with people like that, you are encouraged and strengthened from day to day to continue this journey step by step. Sometimes there are potholes, but I think we've learned to jump across them. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to bring Archbishop Tutu in on this conversation. Um, 
I, like everybody in this audience, the idea of the two of you talking to each other uh, with the values that you have, because you have said before, uh, my goal is not regime change, my goal is value change. Uh, values are what uh, drove the people in South Africa to find their own freedom as well. Archbishop Tutu. Well, I, I'm like a smitten young man. <laughs> Uh, I love you. <laughs> and I want to the compliment. <laughs> say that again, please. I said I must return the compliment and say I love you. You're smitten as well. <laughs> I just want you to know how much you have inspired many people and because you continue to believe in the humanity even of those who have sought to dehumanize you over these many years and God is proud of you and God smiles even through the pain as God looks at the incredible things that you are doing, have done, the things that you have suffered, your compassion, your beauty. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> it's... When you, um, do you believe and do you have to believe uh, that democracy, full democracy, will come? Yes, I do believe that. Otherwise, I would not be taking this journey step by painful, painful step. Because when we talk of democracy, we're really talking about institutions. We want the kind of institutions that will protect the freedom and security of our people. And some people say democracy is a Western concept. It's a Western word. But the idea of freedom and security, beautifully balanced, is a concept that is acceptable to human beings across the globe. And this is what we want. People want to be free, but they want to be secure as well. This is why when the Americans talk about the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, everybody else can understand that. We all want our lives to be, to be protected. We all want... Uh, to be free. We all want to be able to find our own happiness, the freedom to search for our own happiness, to build up our own happiness, not to have other people's idea of happiness imposed on us, whether we want it or not. So I think when we say we want democracy, we want the kind of simple freedoms and security that people all over the world want. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was talking about the rights of women and girls. In Burma, women are supposed to have a, a relatively high status in society, and yet we are still the second class gender. We can't deny that still, even in Burma. And these days, there's a problem of human trafficking. And of course, the majority of those who are trafficked are women and girls. So this shows that there's a lot still to be done for women and girls in Burma, as in Africa and other places in the world. We would like to join hands with those who are trying their best to strengthen the position of women. By joining hands with women from all of them, I think that we will be able to achieve our goal, which is security for all the people in Burma, men and women. We're losing the sound a little bit, but we heard the essence of what you said, and yeah, you have another partner in your um, in your campaign. When you um, look at the Arab Spring. Um, does it resonate with you because of the struggle you have made for dignity and democracy and, and changing uh, 
the opportunity for people to control their own destiny? Yes, of course. Movements like, uh, like these, like, like the ones that have been going on in uh, the Arab countries, mean something to people all over the world who are struggling for their own freedom. It reminded many of us in Burma of what happened in 1988, right. when our people rose up to ask for democracy. Of course, our societies are very different, but in the end, we're all human beings. And I think we can all understand each other's hopes and fears and aspirations. We would like the Arab countries to be as happy and prosperous and secure as we would want our own country to be. I'll give you another opportunity. <laughs> I'm, you, as you sit there smitten. I'm, I'm dazed. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say, too, how inspirational you have been pointing out that ultimately good will prevail, that we believe God wants this world to be a world that is more compassionate, that is more gentle, that is more caring, that is more sharing. And, and you leave that out. Uh, and I mean, when one would have expected that you would have been hard and you're so petite, demure, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's irrepressible. Um. Let me just look at the last year. Uh, you released... Yes, go ahead. I was going to say this is going to turn out to be a mutual admiration society. <laughs> I because think we've so. Because we're from South Africa. <laughs> Sorry. You. Go ahead. If you, she wants you, you. Yes, were, go ahead. Were, you were asking me a question, something about last year. Oh, I was. I wanted you to reflect on, I mean, what, whether there... It, did, did, is it turning a corner, do you believe? I mean, you were released in November, I think, of last 2010. Um, are, are you having, you, you feel that there is real traction taking place uh, in terms of building on the possibility of changing Myanmar? I think there's a possibility of change. I think this I noticed from the, the, on the very first day I was released because I saw so many young people in the crowd who came to greet me. Many more young people than I'd ever seen in other crowds that had come to greet me in many parts of Burma before I was put away in 2003. Right. And this made me understand that there was some change going on, change that is coming from the people. And I think that's the best and most reliable kind of change. Mm. And, uh, of course, I, you will probably have heard that I've had talks with some of the representatives of the government, and we hope that we are going to see signs of real change very soon. There has been a lot of talk about change, but people always want to see something concrete, and they're right, too. Talk is never enough. But at least it's a beginning, and I think we are beginning to see the beginning of change. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, we have said, I mean, I have said, I'm looking forward to coming to Burma when you are inaugurated as the <laughs> head of government there, quite seriously. Oh, I'll <laughs> we couldn't hear here because of the applause for, for that. Would, would you repeat that? I have to be very, very ambitious because I do want, want him to come. <laughs> um, we're all witness to something that's going on here. <laughs> uh, mutual admiration and more. Um, when you, 
what is it that the world can do uh, to, to aid in the struggle that you're engaged in? Awareness. I always say that. What we really need is awareness. Awareness of what is going on in our country. It's uh, not easy to know exactly what is going on. Sometimes I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on because so much is going on at the same time. But I think we need to cultivate an awareness of what is going on around us. And if the world wants to help Burma, the world needs to know what is happening in Burma. And this means a lot of effort. You don't get to know what's happening in a place just by looking at a newspaper from time to time. I think you really have to follow what is going on there and to think very deeply about the implications of every small change that you notice. Change is not always for the better. And even if it is for the better, it's not always sustained. So what we need is change in the right direction that is steady and sustainable. And we would like the world to keep an eye on what is happening. Can, can your neighbors, India and China, do more? Burma and to help us. We know that it's a people of the world and uh, whether we want to or not. I'm sorry? Uh, go ahead, continue. We, we, we're, I couldn't hear you. Can you hear us as well? Okay, good. Um, I'm sorry. I think she's gone. No, no, I don't. Did we lose? Yes, I think it's gone. Okay. I'm going to, whether, whether she can continue to hear us or not, I want to invite President Clinton to, to come to her stage uh, to talk with her uh, when he comes back uh, um, and is able to come out of here. Because he said to me uh, how excited he was, as I said earlier, uh, to be here uh, when this conversation was going to take place with you. So when he arrives, I hope he'll come back and join us. Um, but awareness is one thing that you suggested. We have to be aware, and you just can't uh, come and occasionally check on it. You have to have an ongoing sense of, of the necessity of awareness and contribution. Uh, but what is it that governments can do? What can President Obama do? And what can Hu Jintao do? And what can um, Mahmoud Singh do in terms of, of changing the dynamics of the situation? I think, first of all, they should listen to the voice of the people of Burma. What is it that the people of Burma want? And then they can decide how they can help. Because with Hu Jintao and Manmohan Singh, we are neighbors. Burma is a neighbor of China and in India. And we've always been good neighbors. And we would like to continue to be good neighbors. But times have changed and circumstances have changed. And to continue to be good neighbors, certain policies will have to be changed. I believe that the best kind of relationship between any two countries is a good relationship between two peoples, not between the governments, between the peoples. And this I would like every head of government to keep in mind, that it's the peoples who matter long run. And with the United States government, I would like to take the opportunity to say that I very much appreciate what they have done for us over, over two decades now to help us in our struggle for democracy. But of course, we always think that more can be done. And I think uh, uh, this is so with people who are struggling. We always think that more can be done. And we would appreciate it very much if the process is helped by giving the, by the right kind of encouragement in the right direction. This is not always easy. You have to decide what is the right kind of encouragement. And of course, they're always prepared to tell you what we think is the right kind of encouragement. <laughs> is there specific things that you need uh, in order to communicate your own struggle and, and your own passion? Do you have the access that you now need in order to really communicate? 
or are there limitations in terms of what you can do? Well, this is uh, the, the kind of thing that I could never have done seven years ago, yes, to speak indeed. to you like this and to see you like this. So we are making progress, but we need more of this sort of progress. And what I'm very concerned about is that we need our young people to be more fit to cope with the challenges of this modern world. We need a better education system in Burma. We need better health care. We need a more open society in which our young people can realize their potential. And are they aware, are the young people of Burma aware of, of your own struggle? Does everyone understand uh, the plight that you have had to undergo? I wouldn't say that everyone is aware of it or everyone understands, but I can say that a lot of young people are supporting us, and I think more and more every day, and that's terribly encouraging. The, the, they are very much involved in the, the, in the network for democracy. Social media plays a role in Burma? Just sorry? Social media, as you know, played a prominent role in the uh, Arab Spring. Does it play a role in Burma? Uh, I, I don't think uh, the media has quite the position here that it had in the Arab countries when the spring began. Because uh, the, in Burma, we do not, not have the, the, uh, such a developed communication system, shall we put it that way? And very few of our young people really have access to the modern IT technology that played such a, an important role in the Arab Spring. You have talked about freedom from fear. Uh, remind us how you have been able to have a freedom from fear and why it's crucial in living the life that you have lived. Well, if you were frightened all the time, you wouldn't be able to do a thing under the circumstances in which I had to live. And so I think I had to learn not to let fear control me. By freedom from fear, I do not mean that you don't feel free, you feel fear, but that you don't let fear control you. That it's not fear that you decide what you do or what you not do. You have to get over that fear in order to be committed to a cause in which you believe. You've also talked about changing values rather than regimes. Um, how will you achieve a change in values? By talking and talking, I suppose. <laughs> so far, that's what I seem to have been doing. I try to talk to as many of our people as possible to make them understand what we are working for, what we are struggling for, and why. I think basically, people have the right to know what other people are doing. If, if you want uh, them to join us, then they must know why we are doing what we are doing. But I have to say that we don't need to explain that much. A lot of our people understand, because they want the same thing that we want. Uh, it gives me great honor, again, as I mentioned earlier, to invite President Clinton back because uh, of what he said to this audience and, and what he said to me. So please invite President Clinton. Hello. I just Hello? was, I was just jealous of the bishop and Charlie having all the fun with you. <laughs> and I wanted to thank you for doing this. And thank you for continuing to lead and inspire us all. And thank you for being willing to make all the sacrifices you have made to live the beautiful life you live. We're very grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been uh, an, 
a remarkable experience for everybody in this room uh, to have this opportunity to see and hear you live as you were speaking these words of, of aspiration and affirmation about uh, universal values uh, and uh, your own sense of the very real possibilities of political change. Uh, I suspect that President Clinton, as well as uh, Archbishop Tutu, would very much like to be there on a day that uh, you see the democracy that you have fought for achieved, uh, and they could be on a plane to uh, watch you as they watch Nelson Mandela uh, find the freedom for the people of South Africa. Thank you again for a wonderful opportunity. This audience in New York is standing in appreciation.